in previous kind of writing sessions was just to have a jam where you just sit on the drums and start playing. Steve picked up my bass and we just started jamming. We, there was no preconceived idea. And I think when you know someone quite well, it's not embarrassing that you're gonna probably play a lot of crap. And you just keep playing crap until suddenly you look at each other and think, oh, actually that sounds quite good. And so uh, it was a nice process because as it was just two of us, Steve could change chords, key, melody, anything, any time, and I could change the tempo or the time signature until we found you know, our legs and we settled on something that we liked. I'm curious though, so was that automatically Porcupine Tree or could it have been something else or, or was it really just a, an innocent jam among friends? So I remember early on actually saying to Gavin, um, you know, hey Gav, maybe, maybe this is something new, maybe we've got some new project going on here and the two of us could use this as a basis for a new band or a new project. And he sort of, I know he just looked at me for a minute and he just said, nah, it's Porcupine Tree. And he was absolutely right, there was something about it that was quintessentially Porcupine, and this is even before Richard got involved, but it just sounded like Porcupine Tree, which is bizarre because, you know, I was playing bass and I played very differently to the way Colin would play, for example. But just something about the kind of symbiotic way that we were, we were creating music together immediately had that kind of Porcupine Tree DNA. So that, that became the basis, foundation for this record in that sense, those first few jam sessions, where we got things like Harridan and Chimera's Wreck, 